Once year I met a celebrity, but didn't let on that I knew who they were story. My mom yelled at Pierce Brosnan. She and my dad were at a ski resort getting lunch. My mother gets quite hangry, an unfortunate tray I inherited, and was waiting in line to order. Right as she's about to order a guy tried to cut in front of her and interrupt her. She snapped and told him to go to the back of the line like everyone else. She got her food and went back to my dad sitting there mouth wide open in shock. Do you know who that was? No. That was Pierce Brosnan. I was 10 years old in 2002 when my mom took me to the Bronx Zoo for the first time. It was a rainy day, so we practically had the whole place to ourselves except for three British kids running around, chaperoned by a woman. My mom quickly befriended the woman, while I made like a kid, and joined the horde, looking at spiders and scorpions, and sharing in the awe and excitement of the animals. After about an hour, when we said our goodbyes, my mother told me that the kid, Daniel, asterisk who I had been hanging out with had played Harry Potter in the movie that came out last year. I had thought he looked familiar. I was a student athlete in college and was required to volunteer a certain number of hours per year. One of the options was to help freshmen move in, which I obviously chose so I could scope out the new talent. I just finished helping move a kid's stuff and head back to the loading area and a black sub pulls up. Out hops Larry David, his ex-wife, and their daughter who was starting school. I immediately recognized him, but played it cool. He wasn't getting a ton of recognition, since I'm guessing not many college students are fans of Curb slash Scenefold. I introduced myself to them all, and he introduced himself, and said hi I'm Larry, and mentioned they were from LA. I replied and said I used to live in LA, and you look really familiar. Did we meet? To which he replied no I'm just one of those faces, and gave me a huge wink. He was cracking jokes the entire move, and introducing himself to everyone just as Larry. Just as funny in person as he is on TV. After finishing the move he was nice enough to take a pic with me. Great guy, and the only major celebrity I've ever met. My cousin rode a ski lift with Jack Black in Vale. Just the two of them. Her husband and I were in the lift behind them, freaking out. When we got off the lift they'd gone their separate ways. We made our way to her she was like wow, that guy on my lift was so nice. We were like no s asterisk asterisk t, that was Jack Black. She was like the school of rock guy. She was so embarrassed. She said she rambled on about living in Iowa for most of their conversation. We laughed our asses off. One of my best friend's doppelganger is Ethan Hawke. Like it's scary how much he resembles him, to the point that during those stupid facebook challenges he just changed his profile picture to him and nobody realized it. Also his favorite story was one time at San Diego Comic Con he actually confused Rosario Dawson at a hotel bar. Anyway one night I'm walking home from work in New York City and I see who I thought was my friend John just walking on a kind of secluded part of 9th RV around Hell's Kitchen and I yell John. He doesn't turn around. So I decide to yell it again, and instead of responding his pace quickens. I decide the best thing to do is to run at him which seemed to terrify him as keep in mind it's late and there are very few people around. Anyway I catch up to him and say oh, you're not John, and then walk away from what was a very frightened Ethan hawk. I used to be a server at a Mexican restaurant right outside LA in the late 90s. One day Leonardo DiCaprio came in with who I assume was his mom to have lunch. This old bean post Titanic so really at the peak of his breakthrough mega celeb status. He was wearing a ball cap, sunglasses and unshaven, but I recognized him anyway. I didn't let anyone know, and I wrote something like your movies are awesome I hope you liked our food on his receipt when I dropped it off at the table. After he left I swung by and picked up his payment and he had left me a note back that said thank you so much for not blowing my cover with a $100 tip. S asterisk asterisk t was awesome I was only like 19 I went and got some playstation games with it after my shift ended. My dad met Robin Williams in an elevator. He got in and they rode a few floors in silence. They stopped on a floor and s bunch of fans ran in and started getting pics with Robin. My dad said he was gracious and took pics with everyone. The doors closed and they rode a few more floors and my dad turned and said does that ever get old and Robin smiled and said nope, never. 
Then my dad got off on his floor and they nodded to one another and my dad went on with his day. This happened yesterday. My wife took my son to the zoo, and he wanted to read every little plaque in the reptile area. My wife was distracted for a moment, so he asked the nearest stranger to read the plaque for him. My mom is a big sports fan. One time she was shopping at, and saw a really large, fit looking man who she didn't immediately recognize but seemed familiar. She thought it must have been a professional football player or something, so she went up to the only other person in the shop who was this smaller weird looking guy, and asked him if he knew who the athletic looking man was. The short guy looked at my mom and said that's my bodyguard I'm Elton John. I helped Steven Spielberg move his daughter's bags into her college dorm. I was working a shift helping first years move in, and I see a guy in a hat and sunglasses who is unmistakably Spielberg. I strike up a conversation, ask if he needs help with the bags, etc first names only were from ca my wife kate and i sent all our kids to east coast schools though stuff like that later when his daughter opened the door for the first time he whipped out a camcorder and wearing the biggest dad grin recorded the whole thing before turning the camera on my friend and me to ask us about the city so i have a supporting the luggage speaking role in a limited release home movie film shot by steven spielberg my sister had an encounter with Jack Black where she didn't know it was him. We were at a concert for my uncle's band and she texted me from downstairs. While she was charging her phone I totally just had a conversation with someone who looked like a fatter Jack Black I texted her back that our uncle knows Jack Black and that was definitely him. Good thing she didn't do the whole do you ever get that you look like a heavier Jack Black thing. I almost literally ran into Shaq at a small restaurant in LA. He was standing in the doorway. You know how some people are so tall you don't see them? So I'm exiting the doorway and say excuse me man and he stepped aside so I could leave. He is one large human being. In the mid 90s I was a cab driver. Our service was like a cross between a limo and a taxi and we serviced some fancy resorts. As I dropped off my passenger at a resort, another guy asks if I'm a taxi, and I say yes, so he tells his friend their cab is here. His friend got in the car and said this ain't no cab, smells too good to be a cab in that unmistakable Chris Rock voice. He and his friend just be ulls asterisk asterisk tted with each other for the 15 minute drive to a local nightclub. There was a white kid trying to talk to a yellow cab driver ahead of us in the parking lot and Chris Rock started imitating the kid, like I need a ride, yeah I'm drunk, but I need a ride, and I was trying really hard not to laugh out loud. He wasn't nearly as famous yet at the time, but I had seen his stand-up routines on Comedy Central and knew etly who he was, but didn't go fanboy on him. Ten tenths would drive Chris Rock again. I was at Ikea in Van Calver and noticed this lady in a low-hanging hat had dropped something. I helped her pick it up and noticed it was Sarah McLachlan. Didn't let on that I knew who she was because I couldn't think of anything to say. A couple of years ago me and my sister were at Comic Con. You tend to see some a lot of famous people there, but it's usually with them in booths with guards and stuff, with the option of Seth Green. Anyway, me and my sister were at one of the booths waiting for their giveaways when a man suddenly came up beside me all excited and in a bit of wonder. He told us how great everything was there and how much of an experience it was for him there. All in a while I was probably looking at him strangely because of how familiar his accent and his voice and his face and his blonde hair was. He asked where we got our poster tubes and that's probably when I remembered who he was but decided to just not mention it because I was kind of still in disbelief and pointed him to one of the far off booths where they sell poster tubes. The man was Owen Wilson. I hadn't been sure it was him because I always thought he'd be a lot taller. It was kind of warming to see how excited he was to be there in the crowds. Met Elon Musk in a Tesla store in LA. Really wanted to meet him but didn't want to be that guy. Decided I had a plan so walked up to him and said excuse me, do you work here? He replied I mean yeah kind of. I say ah what can you tell me about the entertainment console of the Model S? He says, let me see if I can find someone to help you. To which I say, now I'm just f asterisk asterisk k i n g with you he laughed and shook my hand and walked off.
Used to work at a posh hotel, and we had wedding there all the time. I was pretty young at the time, say 15. David Tennant was at one wedding Dr. F asterisk asterisk K-I-N-G who, and I was pouring him coffee. At first I was sat there thinking, is he slash isn't he, so I was playing it cool. I went back to the kitchen to top up more coffee in my coffee jug and the staff were talking about it too before deciding it actually was David Tennant. Spent the rest of the night playing it cool, because I was in that year whatever stage of teenage life. Inside I was freaking out. When I was younger with fewer responsibilities I used to just drive around for the hell of it. To me, driving as a hobby, late at night, was my favorite time. The streets are empty. My uncle is like this too. I asked him if he wanted to meet at American Coney Island. We sat down in a booth. A couple guys walked in after us and sat down behind us. Eminem Dr. Dre and a guy I later found out was Jimmy Irvine. We paid them no attention, but we knew who they were. They finished before us, and as they were walking out Eminem nodded at us and said, Thanks for not making a big deal about this. We got you. He and the other guys disappeared around the corner. <laughs> Worked at a hotel and Russell Crowe came in the lobby. He went to the house phones and called front desk, where I was working. I could see him pretty easily. I answered the phone and he asked to be connected to a room, so I put him through. This wasn't long, after he threw a phone at a hotel clerk, so I didn't want to take a chance at pissing him off. Before I realized who he was Sean Alexander asked me if I liked football. I told him I liked the Steelers. He said yeah I lost to them in the Super Bowl. I felt pretty stupid, but he thought it was funny. Super nice guy. I was at a test screening of the movie Valkyrie, me and my friends were near the front of the theater talking before the movie started, and I went on this big, loud rant about how normally I like Tom Cruise movies, but War of the Worlds was such a piece of s asterisk asterisk t, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, plot didn't make sense, they strung a bunch of cool scenes together, and put a s asterisk asterisk t happy ending on it, and called it a day. After I wrap up my 5 minute rant outlining everything wrong with War of the Worlds the person sitting behind us tapped me on the shoulder and point 4 seats down in my row to Tom Cruise glaring at me, I gave him the nod, and sat there for what might have been the longest 10 minutes before a movie started ever. Not quite what you were asking for, but close enough for an excuse to tell that story. TLDR, didn't notice Tom Cruise, was listening while I talked s asterisk asterisk t about one of his movies. I used to play in local bands in Seattle back in the late 90s. I was sitting in the Mecca, a bar in the Queen and neighborhood, and in walks this dude with another buddy, and they sit down next to me. I didn't look up as I was enjoying a pint and a book. We all mutually knew the bartender well. They started talking about cars or something then it led to music. I made a quick quip about Soundgarden, and how I hoped that they would make another album. This was just before Down on the Upside. I heard the dude next to me say wish granted, we are mixing it, now, it was Chris Cornell, and one of his friends. We talked for a while about Seattle music and playing shows. He asked more questions of me than I could of him. He was genuinely a humble cool fellow musician. He treated me like an equal even though I knew, and certainly know, now that I'm not, in that regard. I bumped into him a couple of other times over the years. He was always the same dude to me. R.I.P. Chris was at a convenience store in LA when me and a very nicely dressed black gentleman walked up to the cashier at the same time to pay. It was night time and he had his dark shades on and was talking on his phone. I gave him the after you gesture and he nodded and said thanks buddy, paid and left. It wasn't until he was out of the store that I realized he was Jamie Foxx. Me and my wife were on a trip for 9 days with Rain Wilson, Dwight from the office and his family. I know he doesn't like being treated like he's just a character from a TV show, so I refrained from mentioning it or even letting on that I knew he was a famous actor. One day he had a sandwich with some beetroot in it, turns to his wife and says these beets are really amazing. It took every bit of me not to say something about Dwight then. He's a fantastic guy and his family is lovely. My brother used to work a parking booth at a lake where Chuck Woolery used to fish. Chuck would pull up, and my brother would say, 5 dollars. 
Chuck would then start to find ways to make clear who he was, Chuck Woolery, my brother would respond with, $5. About 40 years ago my father was sitting next to Telly Savalas at some Vegas blackjack table. For about an hour they talked and bet some large amounts of money and my father never let on that he knew the guy was famous. Telly finally says, it's pretty cool that you haven't asked for my autograph. My father responds, well, you didn't ask for mine. Telly laughs and writes on a cocktail napkin. Hey Jeff, can I have your autograph? He carried that damn napkin with him for years. I was at Soundwa Festival in Australia a few years back. I was at a small stage watching a relatively unknown band called Reg. Was standing there watching when I noticed a guy standing next to me watching too. I recognized him, but I didn't let on. I asked if he knew this band, and he said talked about how creative and underrated they are. Later that night he headlined as a singer of Limp Bizkit. I was sitting at the Genius Bar at an Apple store one day and a very large man with dreads came and sat next to me. He was bringing his phone in to get fee because he dropped it and didn't have a case. I overheard an employee jokingly say, you wear a helmet when you play football, shouldn't your phone have the same protection? I knew it was Larry Fitzgerald, but I didn't want to be a fanboy, so I started asking very broad questions about what he did as a profession, to stay engaged in a conversation with him. Larry Fitz is, to this day, one of the nicest, most humble people I have ever met. Patton Oswald grew up in the area I was living in for a while. Walked into Starbucks and saw him talking to an older woman at a table in the middle of the room. Made eye contact by accident and gave a little head nod, like I would if I accidentally making eye contact with anyone and went about with my order. Got home and looked up why he'd be in the area and found his wife had died like a week prior. So glad I gave him space. Not sure if this counts as a celebrity, but last fall I was flying from LA to Dallas and the person sitting next to me was a real housewife from Bravo. I didn't recognize her, since I don't watch her show, but she did mention it to me multiple times during the flight. She wanted to apologize, in advance in case there were fans hounding her at the baggage claim. Spoiler alert, there weren't. Hours later when I was checking into my hotel, she was there in the lobby and made sure to tell me again that she was on TV. I worked at a Barnes and Noble in New York as a clerk, but once or twice I'd be called over to the in-store Starbucks cafe to help out whenever they were understaffed. One time Alan Rickman came up and ordered something I can't recall what. I wrote Hans Grubber on his cup though. He smiled at me when he noticed it. My dad and I bumped into Michael Jordan at a Walgreens near Chicago. This was back in 2006 or so. We were picking out birthday cards for my mom, and MJ and his son came in the same aisle browsing some cards. My dad kept his cool and continued to look through different cards, giving him his personal space. I, on the other hand, was 9 years old and in awe, sort of staring at him. After MJ picked out his card, he winked at me and gave me a walk by fist bump. Didn't really set in until I was older. How cool that was. I used to take guided trips on horseback into the mountains in California. Came into work one day to take a group of four out for a ride at sunset. Party of four arrives, and it's none other than asterisk the asterisk Selena Gomez with two of her friends, and one of the biggest toughest bodyguards I've ever seen. I go around the table, shake every own's hand, introduce myself and never indicated I knew who she was, I'm a millennial, I definitely knew who she was. They had a wonderful time and I think they appreciated that I didn't ask for photos, autographs or even acknowledge that I knew who they were. I imagine they don't get that very often. It just seemed like the polite thing to do. There was a big deal about Selena and her friends posting about riding horses on Instagram a few months back. I got down off my horse to take that photo for them, and those are our horses they are riding. It ended up in People magazine. Our horses took great care of the group, and got a lot of extra carrots that evening. Good boys. Daniel Asterisk Rudy Asterisk Rutiger had a speaking engagement in my town. He ate at a restaurant that I worked in. The waitress said he was rude as f asterisk asterisk k and asked me to take him his bill. I asked him to sign something. He told me I'm sorry I'm not doing autographs at this time. 
I said I meant the check sir. Totally stole it from hot fuss, but worth it. When I worked at Target Jack Black came in and kept asking for things we didn't have. Stuff like long johns. It was summer. I just went along with it for a while until he got bored and left. He really wanted to wear long johns and drink wine. I was in a bookstore in Ree and was in the horror section. Picked up a book by Stephen King and flipped it over and saw his picture on the back or inside the cover I don't really remember. I look up and in the next dial over, right across the bookshelf from me, is a guy that looks asterisk etly asterisk like Stephen King. So I hold up the book and say is this you? Yeah. Good books thanks and that was that. I have three of these stories. For reference, yes I'm 49 years old. 1986, my high school band was in the Indianapolis 500 parades. Some friends and I were walking around our dorm area and ran into Chuck Leager. He was driving the pace car that year. None of my friends knew who he was and me, being the 16 year old I was, didn't want to be out of place with them. So I didn't say anything. Mid 90s or so. I worked in a radio shack in northern Kentucky, Cincinnati area. It was later in the evening, and a guy that looked just like Richard Dean Anderson walked in. He was wearing a leather biker suit, almost looked like a racing suit. He sounded like RDA and everything. However, being out of context, for me I was not absolutely positive it was him, so I said nothing. At the time RS required us to get names and addresses, but I skipped that with him. Early 2000s. I lived in Lovelando and went to a local barber shop to get my hair cut. When I walked in there were three men there, the barber, customer in the chair, and a customer reading a newspaper. I could not see his face. The barber finished up with the customer in the chair and said, Okay Neil, your turn. The man with paper puts it down and gets in the chair. And I found myself facing the first man to walk on the moon. I knew he lived in Indian Hill which is one town over from Loveland, but never expected to actually run into him. The three of us did talk, but it was typical barber shop talk. I knew from reading that Neil was a very private man and I didn't want to be that guy, even though I was tripping big time. I've shared this story on Reddit before. I actually had no clue I was sitting next to a celebrity in an airport for about 90 minutes. People asked him for his picture. Some people asked me if I should be in the photo. I declined. The celebrity asked me to smile and play along if anyone else asked for a picture of us both. At first I was confused. As time wore on I was a little embarrassed. He told me he was on TV and we chatted about where we were flying, what books we were reading etc. But I didn't want to ask who he was because it seemed rude. After he left someone asked me how I knew him. I said I didn't. They told me he was Michael C. Hall from Dexter. Saddest thing is I watched that show, but didn't clue in. I think about it and laugh. Someone got a picture of me and Dexter and showed it to their friends trying to figure out who the other guy in the picture was. Make sure to like and subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching.